I'd like to uh, talk about food aid for a moment. Uh, there are some very good features about food aid, but there are also uh, many, many shortcomings. And uh, so I'd just like to talk about that and, and maybe just to, uh, to give an example of, why, of when food aid might be bad. <clears throat> Let's say in the United States, they had a surplus of apples and blueberries and peaches and and they were concerned that it was going to de uh, decrease uh, product prices in the U.S. And somebody said, well, look, you know, uh, I just saw something on TV the other day. There's a lot of poor people on Canada's Indian reserves. Why don't we uh, take some of this product off our market? It'll, it'll increase our market prices. And we'll, uh, we'll give this uh, food away to, uh, to uh, low-income Canadians. Now, that's a win-win for everybody. It... Uh, improves the market prices in the U.S. and uh, these poor people in Canada are going to get um, uh, free food. Well, that's really what we're doing with uh, food aid that we send uh, to Asia and parts of Africa. Now, in Canada, if, if the U.S. did uh, what I just mentioned, uh, I think you would you could expect that the apple growers and the blueberry growers and whatnot in Canada would be a little bit concerned about that because the uh, the products coming in would uh, tend to lower the prices for uh, apples and blueberries and whatever it might be in Canada. And even though it might go to initially go to poorer people, there would be some slippage back into the regular market, and uh, and there it would there would be a depressing effect on product prices here in Canada. And uh, I think we could all realize that, that might be uh, an inappropriate thing to do. So that really is, uh, summarizes what I think is the can be the problem with food aid. Now there are situations where it makes absolute sense, there's no doubt about it. Let's say you're, <clears throat> you're in uh, Ethiopia and Somalia, uh, areas that uh, quite frequently have recurring droughts and there's no, uh, there's just no food being produced in the country at all and people are, are starving. In those circumstances I fully agree that you've got to get food in as quickly as you can and save lives. There's no doubt about that uh, it will not um, adversely depress prices, although if you're concerned about that, you can have a program to, to buy local uh, supplies and add them to the food that is being distributed free of charge. There can be ways to uh, mitigate the potential <coughs> impacts on, on those people who are growing crops in those countries. But generally speaking, if people are starving, there's no doubt about it, you've got to get in there and get food distributed. But uh, food aid on an ongoing basis, in large part because it's part of tradition, I think is problematic. I, I, uh, I can recall situations in Bangladesh where uh, Canadian food, uh, Canadian wheat, was being, being brought in on a regular basis. Now they, they were, CETA was aware of the potential problems that this would raise for uh, local farmers and so what they would do is they would require uh, poor people to uh, to work for their food, so they uh, if they if they were on a road building program, for instance, they would uh, qualify then for uh, a certain number of kilograms of, of wheat. And so it wasn't like it was being given to them; it was being sold. Uh, they had to earn the right to get that food. Now, I I, <clears throat> I do believe they had some policies where if or by if the uh, families were uh, destitute and there was nobody in the family that was able to work that in, in those cases there may be some way to avoid that, um, that problem. But generally speaking, they, they tried to find a way to, uh, to put, put the crop into the, uh, the grain into the country on a, on a, on a, 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 as a charge for it. But even then, of course, uh, adding to the supply means that the price is going to be reduced. Uh, and so therefore it, it slows down the, uh, the growth of the wheat, of wheat production within the country simply because that extra wheat is added to the supply in the country and prices are somewhat, uh, somewhat reduced. And so it is problematic in doing that. Uh, my view is that you're better off to use money. In other words, if you're, if there are, is let's say five or ten percent of the population that is essentially, uh, going without and is in, in uh, dire straits, by all means, have road building programs, but pay them in cash. They then have the wherewithal to go out and buy, whether it's wheat or rice or whatever it is that they require, 
and uh, that will result in uh, increased demand and you will see uh, increased production within the country. So in those cases I really don't think food aid is uh, the way to go. I think you use cash, money, and uh, and uh, if, if Bangladesh doesn't have the, uh, the wherewithal to uh, to support uh, its destitute people then uh, provide the resources to the government so they can provide cash just as we would do in Canada. We don't, uh, generally speaking, don't give out uh, food. We give cash instead of, uh, of clothing or food or whatever it might be. And that's really what I think should be the, uh, the policy of our food aid program.